Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with Unity 3D. In today's video, I'm going to focus on writing tests. We're going to be looking at the test runner, how the test runner works. I'm also going to be showing you some of the Unity test attributes. And also we're going to be looking at the code coverage report that now Unity provides as a preview package. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer. So let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to do and look at a couple of things. One of them is going to be how do we write tests against the XR components? And in reality, it works with any type of component. I just want to show you how to integrate the test functionality that Unity provides into my XR player controller project. We're also going to be looking into the code coverage and how to integrate that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can start looking into tests. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create what's called a test. Basically, it's a test folder. And to do that, we're going to go into a window. Then we're going to go into a general. And if you look at it, it already has the test runner. So if I click on test runner, it's going to be bringing you this nice tool here where you can write tests for either play mode or you can write tests for edit mode. I'm going to be just doing play mode right now so that we can we can run the game and just check a couple of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on where it says create play play mode test assembly folder. And this is going to create a test folder. And I I normally select the folder where I want to put it. Basically, if I want to put it under scripts, I can put it under scripts. So I have the assets selected, so that created it outside. So what I'm going to do is we can just go ahead and move it. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it and then just move it into scripts. And the reason for that is because I like to have everything organized. Anything scripts related is going to be in that folder. And then if you look at this component, it creates what's called an ASMS. It's basically an assembly definition. And this assembly definition is what does the bindings so that the test runner has access to different assemblies in Unity. So that's one thing that we need to do. The other thing that we're going to need to do, because we're going to need to access the XR player controller, is we need to create another assembly definition that is going to live right here so that we can access the scripts or any scripts that are going to be in this folder. So I'm going to right click in here. We're going to click on where it says assembly, assembly definition. There's two of them, so make sure you click on the first one. And this is going to create what's called a new assembly. We can just call it game assembly bindings bindings that way we know that it's binding to the scripts that are here and then if you click on it it's going to it's going to start showing you a couple of things for some reason it always takes a minute to show there we go and now in the inspector we have a lot of different options so if we have options to define constraints we have options to assembly definition references and this is going to be important like if you want to access let's say that we want to access the unity engine xr components so if i just search for xr you're going to see that all the XR components are here. And we're going to need to reference this one. I don't want to do it yet because I want to show you what would happen if we don't have that. Because it's the same error that I had when I was working on. So, so far, so good. So now if we go into, into our test, right now we don't really have any tests, right? So we need to we need to tell the system, okay, we have the folder. Now we want to create a script. And this little inspector here gives you that option. So I'm going to say, okay, create a test script in the current folder. So I'm going to click on it. And this one is going to be to test the XR, basically the XR player controller test. So I'm just going to call it XR player controller test, and then just hit enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up so we can open up Visual Studio. And the reason why I call it the same name as the assembly is because that's normally what I follow. So if I'm testing a specific, you know, a specific controller, a specific manager, then you want to make sure that people know, okay, what is this test going to be for? And in this case, it's going to be for the XR player controller. So that's why we name it. Let me see if it's open it up. If it doesn't open up, we'll just open it up here. It's going to say, OK, go ahead and reload it. And now we have our test. Let me go ahead and rearrange these right here. So if you look at it, it has the name that we gave it. It also has a test name space because that's the basically the folder and the assembly that we created. We also have what's called, this is an attribute. And this attribute tells the system that this is going to be a test. You can also run an enumerator, which is going to do basically a core routine, just like you do when you're writing, when you're creating games. And But I'm not going to use this right now. You can use it if you like to. I think for our demo, I can just do, I can just use this one. But what if I wanted to, what if I wanted to add a test? And let's say that that test, like if we look at this assembly, 
and we look on, into the scripts and actually right here if you look at this one it has an xr player controller but i can't really access that from here so if i do it just gives me the even if i try to type it out and let's say that intellisys doesn't bring it in if i do the period the control period to bring the namespace it doesn't it doesn't know about it and that's because we haven't told the assembly definition where this is and that is through the game basically the binding that we create the game assembly bindings but we don't know anything about it yet so we need to go ahead and hook that up so let's go ahead and get back here and we're going to look at the test here and we're going to be clicking on so if you look at the assembly definition references we need to add a new one and i'm going to click on this that and i'm going to just basically select the game assembly bindings go ahead and double click on it and then it's going to select it so you should see the test runner for the game the unity engine and you should also see the unity editor test runner and also our game assembly binding that we just created now if we go back here and i don't know if i need to restart visual studio but let's try and see if we can access it and it looks like we can access it because it needs to rebuild i'm going to try rebuilding it and see if that does the trick if it doesn't i'll just have to close and reopen it and we can do xr player no. okay so we'll just go ahead and close out of visual studio and i think that's because it needs to rebuild the solution so one thing that we can see now here as well before we go ahead and open it up you can see that we have the test we have the xr player controller test and we have our simple test which we're going to be renaming here in just a second and now let's go ahead and go back into our test and okay this is the thing that i didn't do you have to go to the very bottom and you have to hit apply i wish it was automatic but you have to hit apply otherwise it's not going to get applied and now let's go ahead and open up visual studio and let's give it a second or two and now what i'm going to do well the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to rename these right i like to give these names that are more meaningful so i'm going to say xr player controller that's going to be the class that we're testing and then what i want to do is i want to make sure that we can find the xr rig so we can just say xr rig and we're going to have a series of tests against that and i'm going to say that it exists right that's the first thing the most simple thing that we can do but the other thing that i want to do is let's see if we can now access the xr player controller which we can and, and that's great because that's what we're going to be needing so now let's do let's look up all things here so the first thing that i want to do is i want to make sure that the xr rig is in basically is in the session but you can't really access it just yet because let's let's try it and i'm going to show you i'm going to walk you through that process let's say that we are going to try to find all the objects of that type and i'm going to say xr rig and i'm going to show you that this is not going to work and i want to i want to show you that so that you understand how this works and then we can just say var xr rig and so far it doesn't even know about it so if you go here and you try to to bind it it doesn't know anything about it and yeah you can go here and add the reference but i want to show you how to do it properly so if we go back into our or bindings so let me go ahead and go back here and right now it doesn't really know anything about it because we need to be able to access it here as well so if you go into your game assembly and we add a new namespace so this one's going to be the xr and i know that we need to do this otherwise it's going to come it's going to keep complaining and then i'm going to hit apply and we're just telling the system that this binding is going to also bind to the xr interaction and let's go ahead and see what's happening here and we're just going to go ahead and close this and i think we still need to add the reference but let me go ahead and open it up close it reopen it open it here and then let's see i think we still need to add that reference let's wait until these finish finding suggestions and let's go ahead and cancel it i'm going to do it one more time okay we'll just let we'll just let visual studio find it but that's the idea we need to know we need to tell the game assembly that it's going to be accessing the basically the xr the xr name spaces i don't know why this is taking so long and let's go ahead and just rebuild it and see if that's going to help it there we go and then let's go ahead and add the reference and let's see if that it's going to okay let's see if that's going to work and i'm going to hit yeah i'm going, I'm going to be safe make sure that everything okay let's just go ahead and hit play and see okay so it's complaining about unity engine.xr that's okay we'll just wait here and let's see if this is still complaints if it doesn't complain i probably added to the wrong to the wrong assembly that's because i haven't done this 
that's that many times okay so it looks like it's still complaining let me go ahead and try adding it in here into the test instead of the game assembly that i did i probably added it to the wrong one and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and add it there hit apply and it looks like that error went away and that's i think on this one i don't think we need to do it there and i did it there because i wasn't really sure i think all this one is is so that we can access these scripts we don't need to add these assembly definitions here i'm going to try and see if we get any type of error okay so this one is going to be purely to access the scripts where the one that is here is going to be you know telling the system where all the different assemblies are and that's looks like that's working let's see if we can now let's go ahead and add a breakpoint here and i'm going to say assert so this one and we're going to say is not equal to null and it, this is going to error it out but i want to show you why it's going to error it out okay and i'm just going to put a let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here and i'm going to say attach to unity is another powerful thing we can also run this in debug mode let's go ahead and go back into unity and i'm going to mute it because the, the sound is going to it's going to be very loud so let's go ahead and mute it, the audio i'm going to hit play and perfect and and you don't want to hit play there you want to hit play here so let's wait until this recompiles that's fine so you want to hit play here because this is going to be the test that we want to run so we're just going to go ahead and run it and let's wait until everything runs there we go so we have our breakpoint and the reason why this is null is because we don't the the context of this test doesn't really know about our scene yet so we need to load that scene before we can even access any components so if you it's really hard to tell but if i go let's go ahead and hit continue the when you run the test is going to be adding its own context its own scene so it's not going to have access to the script so what we need to do is we need to tell here we need to tell the system that we're going to be accessing a specific scene so i'm going to say private constant a string and then this is going to be the name of the scene we're just going to call a scene to load and then it's going to be the xr controller xr player controller that's what i named the scene so we're just going to be accessing that and then now if you go down here and you access the scene management or scene, scenes manager and we can probably just remove that and then just be bring it in there we go we can just load that scene it's going to say scene to load and now the system is going to know okay i'm going to load the scene and then as soon as i load the scene i'm going to be looking for that component and if that component is not null then i'm going to be you know the test is going to pass so very simple test there's really not a lot to it Let's go ahead and go back and hit run selector again. And go back here and see and look at our breakpoint. And just give it a second here and it should load. There we go. And I can now look. Okay, it looks like it's still null. And I know why, because I haven't added that scene to the build settings. So let's go ahead and go into build settings. I'm going to release the sample scene and I'm going to add our scene. And it tells you here that the the basically the scene that we're trying to load hasn't been added so now we can okay so now everything should be good and i should be able to let me add, a, add this attach the basically the debugger to unity and then we can just hit run select it it's going to run that test and there we go now let's go back into visual studio i'm going to start hitting f10 there we go and we still have a null value in in there let me find out why that is because i did add it xr player controller let me go ahead and look at that this one is called xr player controller that is the scene let me go ahead and look at build settings that looks correct and not no but it was no okay and let me make sure that that is correct we have our xr rig okay find objects of type and the object of type is going to be xarray this is going to be the scene that we want to load and okay so i think everything looks good i'm not sure where we're getting an error let me try something else let me just try object i'm also going to be closing visual studio reopening visual studio just to make sure that i didn't mess anything up and let's go ahead and not show this dialog anymore We'll just put a breakpoint here, attach it, and then let me go ahead and hit play. As soon as this is done, run select it. OK, 
Okay, let's give it a second. So you can see that it needs tests. And the problem might be that we haven't really loaded or seen just yet. And that's why it's not it's not liking it. If we go ahead and look at it, let's go ahead and hit play. And we haven't really loaded or seen yet. Let me see why that is. Okay, so we have our XR rig. We have the component here. And we're adding, okay. So I'm not sure why this is there right now. Let me go ahead and add another test. Let's go ahead and do another test. This one is going to be a numerator. I wonder if I'm trying to, I'm trying to access it way too fast. So we're just going to check. We're just going to give it a few seconds with wait, wait time. Okay, and we'll just say, you know what? We're going to wait until the scene loads. Otherwise, if we don't, if we do it too fast, we're just going to do yell, return. We'll just do a new, wait four seconds. How about we give it, we give the scene about two seconds to load before I, I try to access that component. And then here I'll just say game object. And we can say find game object with type. I think that's fine. So let's try this test instead of that other test and see if that gives us a different result. And I can tell right now that this one, actually, I think these ones need to be Unity tests now that I'm looking at this. And that's probably why it doesn't have access to that context. Let's try this one. If this one works, then we can fix that one. And this one shows you that you can wait, you know, you can give it some time to test, you know, for test to run. And we add the debugger here. And let me go ahead. I'm going to run this one specifically. Instead of running this one, we can right click here, click on run. And let's give it a second and we can go back into Visual Studio. So it's going to wait two, two, basically two seconds before it's going to hit this line. We go ahead and go back and I think, okay, there we go. So if we look at the, if we do F10 to step over, looks like that fixed this issue. We can now, so this is not going to be null. And now if we step over, that test is going to pass. So what I want to know is if this one is going to pass. So let's go ahead and, so that one pass and this is the check marks that it shows. Let's go ahead and click on run all and see if the other one is going to, is going to run. Okay, so I think the issue is that we're not waiting. Well, no, that's not the issue. It's because this has a different context. Let me try adding this attribute instead of test. And these are just basic tests. You can use tests if you just want to do anything outside of the Unity test context. Like you want to test a method that doesn't access any Unity components, then in that case, and I could be mistaken about that, but so far that's what I can tell that it's doing. I'm going to click on run all. And I'm going to check and see if that works. If that one doesn't work, then it's not a Unity test. The issue is that we are not waiting enough. Okay, so now let's try, let's try this. I want to see if this is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and do tests. I'm going to go ahead and build it. And let's see if this one works now so that we can, you know, assess if, if this, if the attribute is going to require or not. And if this, if the second one pass, okay, so, so I think it's a combination, right? We're going to need the unity test attribute. And we also need to wait for the scene to load. Otherwise it's not going to, you know, it's not going to load the scene on time and then we won't be able to find our X array. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say, you know what, this is going to be constant. So I'm going to say int. it's going to be wait time. We can say scene wait time and then we can just give it i think one second is fine we don't need to do and in this case i'm going to just say okay and we can just remove this one and we just we can just assume that the wait time you know it's going to be one second because that is the default and then i think that's everything let's go ahead and go back and give it a second here and now hit run all let me see if that's going to work it looks like our tests are passing. Awesome. So what if you wanted to get these on the on the startup and basically get that component so that you can, you know, that you can access it in other tests? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, we can just copy this and I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So we're gonna do a one-time setup. So it's gonna happen just one time for all the other tests. So we can say XR rig setup. But you can call it one-time setup. I mean, it, it is really up to you. 
So we're going to do exactly this. We're going to wait and we're going to be accessing our XR rig. But in this case, I'm going to do private and I'm going to just uh, access the XR rig. And this is going to be a property. So I'm just going to do XR rig and then we can just do our getter and our setter. Awesome. And I'm going to just access, basically set that right here. And we don't know, we don't need to do any asserts right now because this is only going to be for setting up, setting things up. And I haven't really tried an enumerator. And I haven't really tried an enumerator in the one time setup. So I think that's going to work, but we're going to give it a try. And then the cool thing about this is we don't need to do this anymore. All we're going to be doing here is I'm just going to check to make sure that, you know, this is not null so that we can, you know, we can add more tests that are testing that property. Perfect. And we do need a yell return because this is an enumerator and I think that should, that should work there. Let's go ahead and go back and wait and let's try running this. And let's see if it's work in body signature for setup, tear down. All right, so I think I figured it out. And the issue is that I keep using the, basically the test, the unit test attributes. You wanna make sure that you use the unity attributes. So if we have this code right here, which is what we had before, I'm actually gonna move this out. Let's go ahead and move it right here. We don't need this method anymore. So instead of accessing these, you need to use the unity one. So if I do unity setup, then we can just go ahead and remove these comments here. Then that should work because Unity is going to try to get the context. And let's go ahead and go back into our player or Unity. And let's see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna hit play to run them all. And now it's taking a little bit of time and it looks like everything is working. So the key here is to use the Unity attributes for testing. Don't use the ones that are built in. Like I said, unless you don't need the Unity context, then, then in that case, you can use those, but otherwise use the ones that Unity is providing to you. So now that we have these, we can do other tests. Let's see if we can add a test for the XR player controller itself. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, we can also say player controller, XR player controller exists. And these are really simple because I just want to make sure that you understand how that works. And then I can just say, you know what, XR rig, do you have an XR player controller? And we can say XR player controller. And if it does, then it's not null, then we should be okay. The other thing that I can also try, let's go ahead and this one, I'm just gonna do void. That way you can see that we can also do ones that are not, you know, enumerators. Go ahead and go back, and now we have our second test. I'm going to go ahead and run all. And looks like, yeah, it looks like Unity requires that for some reason that we have and I don't know why that is. Method returning void cannot have an expected result. Interesting. Method returning void cannot have an expected result. What if I change this to just test? I'm just curious. Let's go ahead and go back. Because I swear I thought I tested that before and it was all fine. And let's give it a second. Okay. Looks like that's fine. Yeah, for some reason, if you're not, in this case, if I need an enumerator, it needs to be unity test. In this case, it's going to be just test because I already got that component, the XRA component. So in this case, it works. I don't know really why that is. You, you guys might know, but in my case, I guess this is working. And so now that we have this test, and I could keep writing tests, right? Because this class is it's quite a bit long and I'm not really doing anything, but I don't really want to test anything else right now because I want to show you how call coverage works. So now that we have to test, let's say that you want to echo coverage so that you can see, you know, how much percentage of your code it's covered. So you can go into window and then we're going to go into package manager. And if you search for code coverage, it's going to give you a package, which is currently in preview, but that's fine. It works really well. And I click on install and they're using a component that is already available by the, basically by the programming community. And I'm going to show you what that component is, is in GitHub. And I've been using it for other things in that net. So it's really cool that Unity is integrating that report. I think it's called Report Generator. It's integrating that into Unity Pipeline. Let's give it a second here. And then I'll show you how that works. Okay, so it looks like it's already installed. Let me go ahead and close out of this. 
And there's a couple of things that we need to do to set it up. If we go into window and we go into general, you're gonna see that you now have this code coverage available. And it's going to tell you that code coverage by default is disabled. And the reason for that is because it's gonna take performance, a performance hit in your Unity when you hit play. And they tell you right here that that is true. So I'm just gonna click on open preferences and we're gonna be enabling code coverage. It's gonna say that Unity needs to be restarted and that's fine. We're going to be restarting Unity. I'm just gonna close out of it. And let's give it a second here. Once it's closed, we can go ahead and open Unity, the Unity Hub one more time. I'm gonna open up my XR toolkit. And the last time that I tried, I had to open Unity a couple of times in order for it to show, but hopefully in here, because I'm using Windows and not Mac, it's going to work. That, that was kind of a bias comment, but it's true. When I did it on my Mac, it, it didn't work right away. So let's see. Okay, so it is it is working right away. So code coverage collection is enabled in Unity, blah, 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 to disable it, you know, go to that same setting. I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have these already, basically already set up. So these are some of the options that you can do. You can tell the system where the code coverage is gonna be, in what location. Maybe you don't wanna put it into your project. Maybe you wanna put it somewhere else. In my case, I'm just gonna put the destination to be basically the root of the project. Then you can tell the system what assemblies are gonna be included. Remember, we need tests because that's the one where we have our tests. You can also check cyclomatic complexity and that's basically how, you know, how deep are you calling into your methods and it's going to give you ba basically a, another, another calculation for the code coverage. And then if we wanna generate an HTML report, which we do because that's the cool part about it. And then if we wanna generate a summary batch and then auto generate report, we do want to add a generate report every time we run tests. So I wanna show you how this works and how cool this is. So I'm gonna click on run all. And you're gonna see that this is gonna run. It's gonna, it's gonna run a little, a little bit slower because it needs to generate that report. You can see that the code coverage is getting generated. It'll open up the window where the report got put into. I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and open it in Chrome. I'm gonna open it in Chrome. And you can see that it gives me this beautiful report. I can see the how many lines are covered. What is the parser that is using? And this is the, the GitHub project that I was telling you that I was using for other, and it is called Report Generator. So they're using that same technology, which is awesome. And then I can also look at, okay, what assemblies are getting included. In my case, I wanted to test the XR Player Controller. So you can see that 62% of the code is being covered. You get a little progress bar, which is really cool. The coolest part about, about this is I can go into it and I can look at what lines are not being covered. So anything in green is being covered, of course, because this is getting instantiated. So it's getting all these variables already set. But I haven't really written any tests for this get device. I haven't written any, any tests for this if statement. So this tells you, okay, you have to write tests for that. And then you can basically accommodate and plan for those tests. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about, you know, code coverage or writing tests, let me know. And I'm going to be adding more basically more videos about it because I need to keep learning about it. And as I learn, you're gonna be learning. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you for watching this video today. If you guys have any questions about anything, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out LearnXR.io where I'm doing VR training and also upcoming augmented reality training. If you also want access to source code, make sure to check out patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code and also what I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you very much guys.